I wish you guys could smell this smiley here. It is awesome. David Miranda studied horticulture and botany at the University of Hawaii at Manoa and has his degree in horticulture technology. He has over 40 years of greenhouse experience and has helped to develop several nursery crops such as trellis stephanotis, spathophyllum, and thurium and orchid liner production. Since 2008, he has been working to develop a production program for Big Island Miley within a greenhouse environment, resulting in the Miley Project. The Miley Project is an example of horticulture technology and plant science coming together to reduce the harvest pressure of Miley in the forest and developing a viable nursery business for this culturally important plant. Thank you for joining us today to share your experiences with your presentation entitled, Horticulture as a Needed Trade Skill to Accomplish Sustainable Crop Production in Hawaii. David. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is David Miranda. Uh, I'm originally from Kaneohe on Oahu. I was born and raised on Oahu. My family is originally from the Big Island, and I returned to the Big Island in 1989, uh, not to pursue the family history of chasing cattle around cow pastures as a rancher, because that's our family history, but rather to pursue horticulture. Um, I am involved, or I started this Miley project, but um, before I even get to the Miley, I, I kind of want to talk to the teachers about um, the students in their high school rooms that are asking questions about agriculture in Hawaii as a future and, and what their future is uh, here in Hawaii if they choose to stay here. Well, I, I call myself a horticulturalist. I'm a little more than an agriculturalist, an agricultural practitioner. I, I have a specialty practice in that I've taken the time to learn how to grow any crop that somebody might ask me to cultivate for them for whatever that reason might be. That's what a, hort horticultural, uh, a horticulturalist is. And, and now I've taken that for 46 years and, and I've made a good life for myself doing it. How did I get there? Well, I was one of those kids in high school. I was an honor roll student when I graduated in my senior year. I went to UH Manoa and promptly flunked out for three semesters in a row. Why? Because I really didn't know what I wanted to do. I knew from early on I wanted to grow plants and things of that sort, just because of the family experience and background. But once out of high school, I really didn't know how to pursue that. And so while I was enrolled in agricultural classes, I promptly flunked out because I didn't have a, an objective, a way of getting to where I didn't even know I wanted to go. And then, uh, but I stuck it out and lo and behold, I wound up in a class on horticulture and immediately discovered, hey, this is the thing that my grandfather showed me at the Waimea tree farm when I was just a kid. And we used to go down there and har you know, they, we'd get trees for free as part of the Soil Conservation Service project. And my grandfather planted, him, planted them out on his ranch. And of course, I got to help. And I was just profoundly struck by the fact that you could mass produce trees as seedlings, as a crop in the ground. And, and I was always fascinated by that and didn't rediscover that field until here uh, in like my third year or, or third semester at UH Manoa. Uh, Dr. Crowley was my professor. At the end of that, uh, I never, all of a sudden I was acing classes. I had a reason to be there. I got a job with Pang's Nursery. I went and asked him if I might just volunteer during the spring break to see if I really liked this plant nursery thing. And the uh, rest is history. I worked for Sandy and Everett Pang in Kahalu for 10 years. I learned breeding and propagation and horticulture even as I was going to school and studying it. So I was an exception, but everything started to fall into place rapidly. I eventually got back here to the Big Island in 1989. I spent 10 years growing anthurium. Why was it important to grow anthurium? They had a peculiar problem growing anthurium, a major disease that wiped out a lot of people. 
So while I'm a horticulturalist, I'm fascinated by the problems that are presented by different crops uh, as, as farmers attempt to cultivate it. My purpose is to figure out and sort out those problems and how to do it and continue cultivating. And so uh, it's been 46 years now. I also spent 10 years doing orchids, not growing them and all, but figuring out how to get the things to survive when they came out of the, the tissue culture flasks. We would bring them in from Thailand, all of our cloned material that Jim McCauley bred. I did that for almost 10 years too. And then I left and I started this Miley project in 2008. Uh, it's my own project finally. Instead of me being the grower for other people, I'm doing the growing for myself. It's my affair. I work for me and I call my shots. Um, been studying this plant for many, many years and learned a lot about it. And so I'd like to just show you quickly a few things I'll, I'll even twist up. I've decided or discovered that uh, there was a study done about 20 years ago by the Chaminade uh, Business uh, College over there. And they discovered that Miley was a four and a half to five million dollar potential revenue stream as a crop here in Hawaii. Well, I intend to do something about getting some of that here. Um, Miley grows in the forest, it's a native plant. It grows very slowly and it's under a lot of pressure in the wild uh, from overzealous pickers. And if we could actually produce this reliably with high quality in a greenhouse environment, we could actually begin to market this reliably and uh, begin to bring in some of those revenues. There's absolutely no reason why a young couple from the Big Island can't start a small greenhouse and profit from this and have a totally worthwhile livelihood. Uh, again, we're not growing papayas here, we're growing Miley. We need a horticultural background. It's worth it to go to school and get your horticultural training. So I'm going to step over here and I'll show you a few things uh, about Miley. Even as I talk, these are Miley shoots. I cut these off my vines yesterday. The current uh, greenhouse that I have planted is in its sixth year of production. Uh, this is constant pruning and maintaining of the plants and they just keep generating. So this is what I harvest off of my, out of my greenhouse. These shoots here you can't really see are from 34 to 48 inches long. I'm setting a standard for an industry that doesn't exist and therefore my standard of measurement is from the lowest large base leaf, not from the cut end, to the leaf below the groin point. That's my standard of way of measuring a whip. And so I have 34 to, I believe I said 48 inches of length. I prefer 36 to 38, easy to work with. Obviously, how do you get to a lay from a piece of sticky, you know, a woody stick? Um, you strip the bark on it. The bark will slip against the wood, like so, and you slip this whole thing completely off the interior woody core. And you wind up with something that's all bunched up like this, and, and then you just take it all apart and you wind up with the piece of bark that just came off of one of those shoots there. So I have two of them here. No wood inside, it's totally limp. This is what you use to make a lay. The conventional way of making a lay is to simply take a bunch of these and, and twirl it around like that. Well, that's great. I decided that's no longer appropriate and it doesn't work for something that I want to charge somebody a premium price for because it's going to be a keepsake at their wedding. And this is Hawaii Miley. It's fragrant. It's totally different from the 90% stuff that's imported from the Cook Islands, which is not fragrant. So what I've done now is I've taken two of these wilted, you know, these uh, strands that I've debarked and I put them together and I, I have a pair. There's two of those things put together to make a component. So there's two strands paired together. 
Here's two other strands done exactly the same way, so you can see what I'm getting at. Now all of a sudden, my pairs, I suddenly have four strands of Miley here. People walk into the floor shop, I want to get a four strand Miley lay. And uh, so I have a four strand Miley lay simply made by combining the component pieces. And it ends up looking like this. And this thing can wiggle around and do everything you want and it's not going to come apart because the way I make the lay and put it together is different than the conventional way of doing a lay, which will come apart as people are dancing and shaking and running around. Okay. And so here's, here's a four strand lay. And, and here's the, you can see what was done to get there. You know, so all you're doing is I continue, I would continue and, and with a little more dressing up, my four strand lay is complete. And um, I'm able to get $45 for my four strand lay without a blink of an eye. The neat thing is I can now take a four strand lay, take one of those other single strands, just simply add to it, and now I have a five strand lay and the price just went up 10 bucks. I can also take another pair and add it to the other two pairs and now I have a six strand lay. And now it's a $65 lay. And then if somebody really wants to dress it up and we talk story, um, people have no problem paying me $120 per lay for their wedding special event. That's $240 to start um, be before I got to the rest of the wedding party. Because remember, they all need lays too. And remember, uh, this is Hawaii Miley, so it's fragrant. So when they're done at their party and they take it home and they hang it on their fireplace, in Volcano we have fireplaces. I don't know what you got in Honolulu, but you can hang it on the wall if you like. It'll smell up your room. And with the COVID virus thing happening right now and social gatherings and graduations, which would be my primary market, and yeah, I'm losing some lay sales there, but guess what's happening? I'm getting orders from people who simply want the lay to hang it in their house because they found out that it's available and they just want to smell it again. That's, that's their own, they don't need, they don't have a party, they don't have nothing. And I'm getting orders like this from Maryland, Washington, D.C., Nebraska, Iowa, Michigan, Colorado, everywhere in the country and I ship them because the quality of the Miley is excellent grown in the greenhouse. I've got the protocols worked out for controlling bugs. All of these things, these are the details. This is what a horticulturalist does. And this is what our kids could have a future in this field. Uh, all in a greenhouse, year round production, no running up to the, the mountains anymore. Maybe we take some of the pressure off the forest in the process. So if that helps you to uh, give an incentive to the kids, then that's great. The final thing I would simply add would be, so what about those sticks that are inside all of that vine? Well, check this out. This I harvested yesterday. I stripped the bark off so I could do show and tell here. And overnight, they dry. They turn bleached white. There's, I did nothing to this except allow it to dry in my house overnight. I think the Ikebana people are going to go nuts over this when they suddenly discover that Miley has more than just one product, you know, Miley Lay. We have these awesome dried sticks with the cool twist on the end there. I don't know if you can, the guy said, bring it up close to the camera. You see the little twists on there? And then on top of it all, these dried sticks are as fragrant or even more so than the actual Miley Lay. And they will stay fragrant for three to six months. And you can just go and flip it in your shower there to wet it down. And all of a sudden, and it ain't magic, it's just the way things are, the smell is right back. And, and I know people who have these sticks in their houses now for eight or ten months at a time the same stick, even though I've offered to give them brand new kind, you know. Oh, it's just fine. It's quite fragrant. 
So that's a difference. This is a new crop for Hawaii. I encourage you to get your students interested in the field of horticulture. It will allow them to grow any crop they choose to grow any place in the world because that would be their training. And Hawaii is the last best place for horticulture in the state of Hawaii, this big island of ours. So our big island kids, you guys got a future, man. You guys got a future. Mahalo. Thank you, David. Uh, we have a question that came in. Do you grow Miley in a greenhouse under plastic, or are you able to grow it outdoors? I, I'm in Volcano, we don't have county water. When I built my first greenhouse, um, I built it tall, and it's got a, it's a wooden structure with conventional shade cloth, and I put a greenhouse polyfilm on top of that so that I could collect the water and direct it into my catchment tank. That's the primary purpose of having the hard cover uh, in my case. The other uh, positive thing about it, of course, is it keeps the rain from beating on the Miley. All of this came out of that hard hub. However, I do have greenhouses with no hard cover. It's just shade cloth. And if the shade cloth is pulled good and tight, you can successfully grow the Miley in there. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Another question. Can Miley be grown in pots at school? And I would imagine this would be at a lower elevation than volcano. Mm -hmm. Miley can be grown in pots. Um, there's a, a method to the madness. You'll find that many people say they have Miley in pots and it sat there for two years and never grew a bit. There's a reason for that. Uh, but yes, and I would be happy to work with you folks on it if you like. You can grow it in pots. You have to have a sufficient density if you hope to harvest anything and make some lays. Uh, but yes, you can sustain long-term in pots. You mentioned about exporting the Miley to the mainland. What are protocols for pest control? The, I participate in a USDA program that gives me a particular stamp that, that allows me to ship only my Miley Lay. I can self-inspect, package, and ship my Miley Lay. Uh, the program required that I come to USDA for as, meant, as long as it took until they had 200 to 250 inspections with absolutely no rejections. And um, I was able to do that, believe it or not. They actually like to see my Miley because there aren't any bugs on it. Uh, after that part of the protocol was done, they actually came out to inspect my nursery. And then I uh, was cleared to receive the stamp. Miley is a product that you wear, so you cannot just go and spray insecticides. So I have an entirely different approach to insect control. A follow-up question on that uh, pest control. What about um, locally when you're producing your, your uh, if they're producing Miley at this lower elevation, are there pests that oh. they should be concerned about? Yeah. Um, absolutely at the lower elevations, it's warmer. So you're going to have um, the increase in all sorts of insects. The primary insects I'm getting on uh, my Mylian volcano. I'm up at about 3,500 foot elevation. So let's say you come down into Paneva zone, you're what, 250 feet, something like that. Uh, maybe 300 at the most. Much, much warmer. Primary bugs on Miley, mites, thrips, aphids. They move around a lot on the wind. I would expect that you'd get caterpillars and things. Um, I get them too up there, but they're endemics, um, and I deal with them. Uh, what you just simply need is a good insect management. Understand your insects. There again, go to school, learn about insects, and how to work against them. But yeah, you will have an uh, increased pest problem at a lower elevation. OK, there's a lot of questions coming in here. Oh, okay. How do you start Miley? From cuttings, seed, and how can schools get Miley? 
Um, I, I've worked, oh, I have put many tens of thousands of cuttings of Miley in and not been successful in rooting any of it, not at a commercially of, uh, viable scale. I don't know why that is. I thought I was pretty good at propagating. I have discovered that Miley is best propagated through seed. I have a greenhouse in which I maintain a mother block. I do all of my seed production in that greenhouse. I have a proprietary method in which I affect pollination and I harvest seed pretty much year round if I so choose. Uh, how do you get seedlings? I would suggest two things. Have a responsible program manager, whoever it is that you're working with, contact forestry and ask them about getting a permit and having a forester take you out to a place where you might just wild harvest a few seedlings for the purpose of your classroom environment. You cannot do that for a commercial scale. I'm sorry, you cannot. I had to learn how to propagate my own stuff. You will too. Okay. The other thing is, is contact me down the road. I got another greenhouse to plant. When I'm done planting, I'll probably have excess plants. I don't mind helping schools. I, I don't mind helping schools. So uh, you said you don't mind helping schools. Do you have tours or have other resources available for the schools? You know, I, I've kept myself under the radar for, for this whole time. Uh, and no, I, I rarely, rarely ever have or allow visitors to my farm, uh, primarily uh, for sanitation pr purposes, but also a lot of my technology is proprietary. It's taken many years to get to where we're at right now. And so I don't have tours simply because I don't want pictures of what we're doing flying all around. Um, at some point, you know, and in light of, you know, we're doing this webinar, for what purpose? I will have to figure out a way of accommodating teachers and students, and I will. I, I promise you, I'll, I'll figure something out. Right now, if you want to know more about us, we do have a website, BigIslandMiley.com. I don't really put prices out there, although I've kind of shared that here this today. But we can talk. We can figure something out. Question, can you demonstrate the stripping of the Miley again? With what you've got there. Generally, uh, the shoots grow on, a, where should I stand, right here? Uh, the plants are maintained in the greenhouse in a vigorous condition. I do not allow the plants to become physiologically mature where they're producing flower. This is a production greenhouse. I keep everything in a vegetative state so the plants are very succulent the way you see here. I, use, I have a device that I use, but uh, let me find it. <laughs> Put me on the spot there. It doesn't help with the arthritis. But, uh, I use a, a wet rag, and, and you see this, it's, you have the whip, and it's green and slimy. And then here is the, when I'm doing this in the greenhouse and I'm making an order for 50 lays, obviously I'm not going to be using my t-shirt to grab everything. And I actually have a device that my son put together for me. It's a modified vice grip that I grab the butt end over here with and, and the pliers holds that and I use a wet rag and I simply grab it, and because these are very succulent, they immediately crack, the bark wants to immediately peel, and with the wet piece of rag in my hand, I just walk backwards and it rips completely right off. And I've done some of these that are six foot long and I can get the whole thing without it breaking. 
the whole thing without it breaking. And then the other neat thing is because the way it bundles up, I'm thinking boutonnieres if I can figure out how to keep it from falling apart. Finally, it is said that each island has its own Miley variety. Can you describe the Miley ca characteristics of each island's uh, varieties? Because hmm. you mentioned the big island has, uh, was fragrant and large leaves. Are there hmm. other differences? Yeah, they're, they're sure. Um, all the islands that I've been on have Miley, um, with maybe the exception of Kaho'olawe. I never saw Miley on Kaho'olawe. I've never been to Ni'ihau, so I can't tell you about there. Uh, Miley grows in all kinds of places, all sorts of fragrances or no fragrance. Uh, Big Island Miley is quite sweet, is usually how it's depicted. If you went to Kauai, you would find the Miley that is sweet and heady, for lack of a better, you see how, you know, if you go to Maui, Maui is okay. But I can't say that I have enough experience with Maui Miley to give, you know, to say that it's sweet and heady. So every island has a little bit of difference. Um, Oahu Miley is sweet with a clean air behind of it. You know, now we're talking almost like, wow, that's describing wines almost, you know. But yes, each island has a little bit of hint. What does it mean for me? Okay, I've set as principle for the industry that I'm trying to develop, this Miley industry, I will not interbreed Miley from Kauai with Miley on, on the Big Island. Why? Because it's a cultural product and I think that we would run into problems with cultural sensitivities. And since the Miley from each island is totally able to stand on its own in terms of its fragrance, I don't think we should just randomly go out and start crossing things. There needs to be a discipline behind of it. Each island instead, what I propose, I have three seedlings of Miley from Kauai. They're extremely valuable. They're the most valuable plants in my entire greenhouse. Okay. I would propose that, and I'd like to get a greenhouse filled with Miley from Kohala Mountains on the Big Island. My variety here is Kau. I selected a Kau variety. I'm trying to get a hold of Kohala Mountain. Miley, which is large leafed and very, very fragrant, whereas often the very large leaf Mauna Kea Miley is not very fragrant at all. There's all of these little things. The literature says there's three kinds of Miley. I've got at least nine varietal forms that I recognize, you know, of all leaf forms and shapes, yeah. So there's a lot of, there's a lot to talk about with Miley and, and fragrances and all of that. Thank you, David, for your work on such an important cultural plant. Mm -hmm.